up everybody, Subaru to Rickspan here for another car review. This is of course the 2014 Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art. Huge thanks to Harrison Auto Sales for hooking me up with this car to review for you guys today. So about the Rally Art, well this is kind of a rare car and uh, you know everyone talks about WRXs but no one ever looks at Mitsubishi's entry into the sub Evo segment which is you know this car, the Rally Art, which you know it has some bits and pieces from the Evo here. It's got an Evo hood on it and the spoiler is similar just not quite as extreme. It looks a little milder obviously so it doesn't look like an Evo. But, uh, you know, it has a lot of the same stuff as an Evo. It has all-wheel drive, it has a turbo four-cylinder engine, and it's, you know, like seven or $8,000 cheaper. I think it looks good. It's obviously milder than the Evo. The Evo looks a lot cooler, but these are still a pretty good-looking car. Right, so for the interior of the uh, Lancer Rally Art, first things first, getting into it, um, the doors have a lighter and a little bit cheaper feeling, but they're decently solid. Uh, then you sit down in these seats, though, and um, this is one area that they're, it's not as good as the Evo. You know, the Evo seats, those are probably some of the best seats I've ever sat in, and uh, this car just has standard Lancer seats. Um, and so, you know, it's just this cloth. Bolstering leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, they're okay, but, uh, you know, just compared to the Evo, they're just not as good, and I'm sorry anything's gonna pale in comparison and these seats just uh you know just seem like standard like kind of economy car seats to me uh steering wheel in this car though is very nice leather wrapped i like the contrast stitching on it and uh this one is obviously equipped with the twin clutch automated manual uh which has the paddle shifters here and uh, they're very nice and have a metallic feel i think they're actually metal which is nice and uh so that's cool and they're also mounted to the steering column not to the steering wheel so whenever the wheel moves the paddles don't i actually like that and prefer that uh, coming along to the gauges in this car uh similar it's actually exactly the same as what you get in the evo so uh you know you have pretty basic gauges. you have a little uh, color display there in the middle it gives you some information and uh you know not super crazy but uh pretty nice and uh, come along to the center of the dashboard here there's like no buttons. That's the one thing that jumps out at me. For 2014, they revised the head units and stuff and now has a backup camera standard and it's all touchscreen. So you just have an eject button, a menu button, and a power and volume knob, and that's it. So uh, everything's touchscreen. It's very easy to use, though, very quick, very responsive, and I have to hand it to them. Uh, it's, you know, very well done unit. Climate controls, things like that, actually have a really nice resistance to them, and it's really impressive. Uh, you know, so all the things that you touch in this car are pretty good. The shift knob is nicely leather wrapped and everything. Um, but the rest of this car just feels kind of dated. They didn't really update any of the rest of it over the past five years that this uh, generation has been in production and so uh, you know just from the very get-go it just still it feels a little bit dated um, you know I mean it's pretty good compared to the 2014 Impreza or you know the somewhat older model years of uh, some of the competitor cars but whenever you realize that you know a car that costs this much this car is over $28,000 brand new um, for the same money you could be sitting in a Focus ST or something like that that is much nicer on the interior all the materials are nicer this you have some cheaper plastics I mean everything's nicely padded um, it just like this is really cheap feeling um, and just you know some of the plastics and things squeak and uh, the fit and finish and stuff isn't quite up to par uh, and this is just a very competitive segment and if you're not updating your stuff regularly it just falls behind you know the Civic is $5,000 cheaper the Civic Si and it has a much nicer interior I think um, but uh, you know it's good in the size you know roominess and stuff is good back seat space in this car while we're talking about roominess is actually excellent you know plenty of leg room plenty of headroom um, comfortable enough you know basic cloth trunk in this car is uh, not so roomy though uh, compared to the competition these days the trunk is smaller in the Lancer than it is in some of the other cars, but uh, it's not bad. As far as storage space goes in this car, uh, again, not the best, uh, but you have a bottle holder here and map box in the doors. It's always nice. Come along to the center, though, that's where it's kind of lacking. You have this tiny little uh, tray. You can put some stuff in this little cubby, but half of it's blocked off by this box that I don't know what it does but um, so it just kills half of your storage capacity in there uh, and then you just have your standard uh, cigarette lighter and a little slot or an ashtray or this little cubby goes again very very tiny and barely usable you have two cup holders and then you have this uh, little armrest console here that uh, has a pretty good depth and uh, just has a power outlet in it um, but uh, yeah that's it as far as storage space goes 
All right, so let's take it for a drive and see how it does. Uh, this 2014 car, it's uh, keyless start, so you just have the little fob here you can keep in your pocket, and there's like a key-like thing you have to twist still, and you start it up, and uh, we're still life. All right, so setting off in the 2014 Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art. So first things first, uh, I have this car in drive, and like I said, it's the automated manual, it's not a true automatic, which I actually like, because, you know, in performance driving, it's better, but uh, in, it doesn't have the normal drive mode down very well to me. For some reason, it likes to hang on to lower gears a little bit too long. I mean, performance people might like that, but as far as fuel economy, if I'm just like, like I'm doing now, just trying to drive slowly through the park, um, it should be in a higher gear, and it just likes sitting in a lower gear. It's uh, a little odd, uh, but otherwise, Okay, so uh, visibility all around is very good. The rear visibility is actually really good. Uh, even though you have that wing that's coming up, uh, you can still see out of it pretty well. Yeah, I mean, the ride is comfortable. You know, it's uh, pretty, I think it's definitely more comfortable than the Evo. If you want something that's got a softer ride than Evo, this right off the bat feels a lot less hardcore. Um, and uh, on top of that, you know, I'm also sitting up higher in this car because of these seats and the way they are. Um, so you have a better view, you know, in the Evo, I was kind of really hunkered down and that was, you know, the way that you sat in that car. You couldn't really change that. This, you're sitting up higher. It feels more ordinary, I guess you could say, um, but it's good for visibility. And uh, overall, it feels pretty refined in here for the most part. All right, so I have the transmission in sport mode. I have it in manual mode. And uh, so let's turn on to this back right here and see how it does. <laughs> All right, so it's quick. <laughs> It's definitely quick. Uh, it gives you a similar sensation to the Evo. It's uh, obviously not as intense and uh, not as fun, but it is fun. It still gives you that same uh, rush. Uh, one thing though is these paddles, it, it's normally pretty quick to react, but uh, whenever you're on full throttle, for some reason it took a second before it shifted. So we're dealing with 237 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque, which is a healthy amount. Um, and uh, it's very much appreciated on these back roads. Uh, one thing I've noticed, though, even though it's a high torque figure, uh, it doesn't seem like it has much power in the lower RPMs. You really have to keep it in the, you know, turbo to really get any power out of it. But uh, around these corners, it's handling pretty well. I mean, obviously, it's not as good as the Evo. The Evo literally felt like it was on rails. This does not feel nearly that good, but it's not a bad handling car on its own. Coming up to this tight corner, I always take, and let's see how the body roll is. Yeah, there's there's some roll. I mean, it holds its line okay, but uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe just because I keep comparing this to the Evo, it's definitely not going to be anywhere nearly as good as the Evo. It's okay, but not the best still. Definitely not as good as the WRXs, I think. All right, so let's see about this power again, though, shall we? Let's see, it just... <laughs> until like almost four grand and then it really starts taking off but you kind of have to wait for it uh it's fun though it is fun i'm worried that around town though it would just kind of be a little bit too pokey like it needs to just you know go for it and it doesn't uh, i like having torque down low in this car it says it comes on at 2500 rpms for max torque but i am just i'm not feeling it i don't know we're just cruising along here though you know, it's a very nice car for just cruising comfortably. You know, it's very quiet and, you know, smoother ride than the Evo. Definitely more comfortable than the Evo in that regard. But yeah, I'm gonna drive this car the rest of the afternoon here and I'll come back and give you some updated impressions. All right, so I've been driving this car for a while now. And, uh, you know, it's good. It, it's, it's good and bad. There's, you know, it's definitely nowhere near perfect. It has, you know, a lot of things I can gripe about. Uh, as I've been driving around, it's very resistant to going into reverse if you're in park. It has this little, uh, you have to pull up on this ring to put it into any of the other gears. And, it, like, you have to always, like, pull it twice to get it to go into reverse. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of annoying. The stereo is a pretty muddy sounding stereo. Not very clear or crisp at all. Um, and so, you know, so it's just, it's, the refinement is just lacking in this car, I think, just a little bit. Um, but, you know, as far as the actual driving dynamics go, instead of comparing this to the Evo, I should be comparing it to a standard Lancer and saying that it's a really, really good 
Lancer, not that it's no, you know, not quite as good as the Evo, um, you know, because I think that's kind of unfair. The Evo is so legendary, and you have to look at this car separately, and on its own merits, it's a very good car. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about yet is the steering uh, has great feel and really nice weight, uh, so, you know, that's really good. The pedals are pretty good. They're a little bit too touchy for my taste. Um, it kind of reminds me of some of the older Civic SIs that have these jumpy throttles as well, uh, but it's not bad. Uh, but, I mean, you know, as, as you're driving this car, it does feel good, and, um, Again, this automatic, it's, you know, it's not that great in automatic mode. Like I said, it's an automated manual. So whenever you're starting, you know, from a stop, it's, you know, it's almost like someone's engaging a clutch and you can still feel that. It's not very refined. Granted, this is, you know, a pretty old twin clutch system. Uh, that's the same one that's been in the Evos for five years now or so. Uh, and obviously everyone else has, you know, improved and I still have to hand it to Mitsubishi for even offering a proper twin clutch because, you know, it's either this or a manual, whereas if you are shopping for a WRX, even for the brand new 2015 model, the best they are willing to offer is a CVT that's souped up and uh, that's, you know, kind of lame to me, but um, so, you know, it's nice that you do have a proper dual clutch. I'm not going to complain too much. I'm just grateful they have it. Obviously, most people would probably go for the manual still, but if you sit in traffic every day, this really is kind of the best of both worlds. I mean, like I said, it's not the smoothest twin clutch, not even close, but uh, it's not bad. I think, though, you know, as I've been driving this car, I just realized that, you know, it's, it's a fun car. Clearly, you know, the power is enjoyable and it handles fairly well. Um, but the WRX to me, just the way that it delivers power is more exciting. Even, you know, the previous generation, uh, I'm not even comparing the 2015 because that would just be totally unfair. The 2015 WRX is leaps and bounds ahead of this car in 2014 and they're not really updating it really for 2015 either. So uh, you're stuck with the same thing if you want a Mitsubishi. Uh, the WRX has continued to improve, but even the 2014, the older you know, generation uh, WRX, even those um, just seem, you know, so much more fun and uh, energetic. And, uh, you know, they didn't just, for some reason, it just it felt better than just a standard Impreza. This still feels like a standard Lancer that just has, you know, better engine, has the twin clutch, and maybe mild modifications to the suspension. I feel like the WRX is better separated from the Impreza than the Rally Art is from the Lancer. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not bad, obviously. I'm a Super WRX fan, so maybe this is my bias showing through just a tad. Uh, but I think that, you know, most people would probably agree with me that this car isn't quite as fun as a WRX, and that's why you don't see that many rally arts. How many WRXs do you see everywhere? I mean, it's probably because they don't produce a lot of these either, but they're not very hot sellers, I don't think. And so, you know, it is a good car. I think Mitsubishi, it's, I'm just glad that they, you know, wanted to put a competitor out there for the WRX because there's very few other cars. I mean, yeah, there's lots of great hot hatchbacks in this price range, but they're all front-wheel drive. If you want an all-wheel drive hot hatch like the Golf R, you're spending well over 30. This being brand new at, you know, 28 and a half or so, and you have the dual clutch and all-wheel drive and all that, it's a still a fairly good value. I think Subaru just hasn't beat, especially now with the 2015 WRX. It's far superior to this car in every way. Um, but, you know, it's still a good car. It's just, I think, a tad overpriced. Uh, you know, the interior does not feel worth 28. If you have the insane performance of the Evo, I could see, okay, you know, you can forgive that car for not having the best interior. Uh, but on this, you know, you kind of want nicer stuff since you don't have an all-out performance feel with this car. And uh, it's just... It's just kind of lacking for me. It's just not doing it for me. Um, it is a fun car though, not gonna knock it. And um, yeah, just has its strengths and weaknesses. And the weaknesses just irk me more than uh, they do in most cars. I think the thing that really makes it tough is that all the cars that are out these days are just so, so good. And uh, there's really not a whole lot wrong with a lot of the brand new cars that are being put out these days. Uh, whereas this is one of the ones that does have a few glaring things that I don't like. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys. A huge thanks to Harrison Auto Sales once again. This one is available on their lot if you're interested in it. Uh, and you know, being used, this one has less than 10,000 miles. You save yourself a good amount of money. So uh, if you want a cheaper rally art that's basically brand new, then here you go. So definitely give them a call and they'd love to hook you up. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Take care.